Linus Tech Tips coverage of CES 2015 is brought to you by Phantom Glass. Visit store.phantom.glass for the best darn screen protectors out there, as well as HyperX. So our first video at the Razer Suite is going to be the things that I'm actually, frankly, not that interested in. Number one is the Nabu X. Now, I talked about the Nabu when they originally announced it back at CES last year, and the Nabu X is effectively the lower cost version of what was already a very reasonably priced wearable device, albeit one that didn't have a ton of functionality. So the main selling points of something like the Nabu were going to be, it's got that sort of like privacy mode, read your messages on a little OLED screen on the inside thing. It gives you notifications just like you'd expect any smart wearable that's paired to your phone over Bluetooth would. It's got some fitness tracking stuff and then they're building in these social features that, I don't know, maybe you guys have a lot more friends than I do, but I don't know anyone else who wears the same wearable as me. In fact, I don't have many friends at all. So for me, it's not much of a selling point, but this one, depending on the pricing, they're saying it's going to be $49.99 at retail, although insiders could get them for as little as $19.99, might be a good balance between, okay, it doesn't have a lot of functionality, but it's also not very expensive. So it's got three LEDs on the top. They are red, green, or blue, although no color mixing is supported at this time. And then basically you configure it within their app to say, okay, well, you know, green is going to be, oh, I don't know, missed uh, messages. And then red is going to be whatever else. When you reach an achievement in your fitness goals, then you can get the fireworks to go off. And there's, there's little ways that you can program it like that. It's got a vibration mode. And unlike the Nabu, I can already say that the build of it seems to be a little bit smarter. So it's got more of a watch band style band with lots of different notches. So I can actually make it the right size for my wrist, even though mine are quite small. I had a hard time even getting a watch that was going to fit me quite right. And the overall ruggedness of it, the module actually fits inside. And it looks like they've built in the capability to potentially upgrade this thing in the future, although Lord only knows what they would actually do to upgrade it. But the module fits inside, and then it's got what is effectively the band, it makes the band effectively like a protective housing for the thing and it really does seem to be designed to be banged around as long as it's uh, within its protective casing. They're quoting five to seven days of battery on it which for me is really the magic sweet spot. It's the reason that I'm still using a Pebble instead of an Android Wear device. So what do I have to say about this? Um, Razer's going to have to prove to me that social integration with something like a wearable device, like exchanging, you know, friend contact information by shaking hands with someone or holding wrists with them, you know, like, I have the power to exchange contact information with you or see the last game you played on Steam. They're going to have to prove to me that that's functionality that people care about. But in the meantime, at least it's affordable, if nothing else. And they are doing a lot of work on the whole health side of things as well. As little as I believe that a health wearable is actually going to make people healthier, they're at least building in support for things like iOS's health app, so you're not tied down to just using Razer software on your phone. You can actually do other things as well. Speaking of not being tied down to Razer software, this is something I wasn't really expecting to see. Maybe because I don't pay attention to rumors at all, maybe because I'm a caveman shut-in and I don't read anything at all, but maybe everyone knew this was coming, but this is their OS VR head-mounted display. And what it is, is it's OSVR. You can tell there's no Razer branding on it whatsoever because OSVR is not Razer owned in the sense that they actually, it's, it's not a company that they own. This isn't a product that they own. They are actually, they developed this product and they are open sourcing the whole thing. So the idea is that they're open sourcing both the software and even this piece of hardware. You'll be able to download an Excel sheet with every single component in, inside this thing. And whether it's for personal use, like you want to change out the 1080p screen for your own screen if you so desire, or whether it's for commercial use and other companies want to jumpstart their own head-mounted display technologies, this thing is going to be completely free for anyone to use and develop for and uh, augment or whatever else the case may be. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what's in it for Razer then at this point? Well, they've got a couple cool technologies that they hope to be contributing to the VR space in general. So one of them is a dual lens system that eliminates distortion. And also, actually, what's cool is I believe it's with the knobs on the bottom, but don't quote me on that one. You can adjust it so that if you have a visual impairment, if you need glasses, you should be able to use this by adjusting the dials to sharpen the image without glasses. And the other thing is I think they're, more than anything else, hoping to sell people Hydra 
does as VR takes off and becomes more and more ubiquitous. So what's in it for Razer? Well, whether or not they actually release a Razer head-mounted display is up in the air right now, but they will definitely be able to sell peripherals to anyone who's getting into VR, and anyone who's getting into VR is going to need a whole new set of peripherals because that whole keyboard mouse thing does not work very well for VR. So whether or not this is a success is, uh, is a complete mystery to me because right now I don't think they have any comment pretty much whatsoever from Oculus about whether they're going to support this whole OS VR thing. And I would suspect that based on that Oculus right now is talking about game de games needing to be developed specifically for functionality with the Oculus, we're going to be looking at kind of an iOS Android type approach here where Oculus might be that more closed system but more tightly integrated and OS VR might be that shaky at the start but who knows what the open source community can do to polish it over the long term solution. So exciting and uh, I definitely need to actually try it out. I'll bring you guys another video trying it out on the floor if I get some time but uh, the future for this one is very very hazy, both of these. Speaking of things that are hazy, CES, lots of cigarette smoke in the air, lots of great content, and our trip here would not have been possible without our sponsors, Phantom Glass. Visit store.phantom.glass to check out the very best screen protectors we have ever encountered. They're Gorilla Glass 3, so they're perfectly transparent, and they have that same wonderful feel on your thumb, so you don't have that, like, gross, oh crap, I have a piece of plastic over my awesome glass feel. That's store.phantom.glass. You can check out the link in the video description, and also linked in the video description is HyperX, so they've got a lot of great gaming content on their YouTube channel. You guys are going to want to check those out. YouTube.com slash HyperX. Those are also linked in the video description. Don't miss any of our CES coverage by making sure you're subscribed. And uh, on to the next video, right? You're just waiting for our next video? Go watch it now, unless it's not out yet. In which case, thank you for watching this one so quickly.